The complete bipartite graph, KMN, is Hamiltonian if and only if M is equal to N and they're both greater than or equal to 2. That's what we'll be proving in today's Wrath of Math lesson. A viewer, Monal, asked me to go into a bit more detail about this result in the comments of a previous video. Always appreciate those requests. Be sure to leave yours down in the comments. Quick recap on terminology, this KMN is the complete bipartite graph where one partite set has m vertices and the other partite set has n vertices. So this theorem says that a complete bipartite graph is only going to be Hamiltonian if both of its partite sets have the same number of vertices, at least two in each. So we will, of course, prove both directions of this statement because it is an if and only if theorem. So we'll start off with the easier direction where we have a complete bipartite graph with partite sets that have the same number of vertices. So we've got a complete bipartite graph, KMN, where M and N are equal and they are greater than or equal to two. Since we have a complete bipartite graph, a natural place to start is to name our partite sets and the vertices. So let's say one partite set is X and it contains vertices X1, X2, all the way up through how many vertices are in X? Well, there must be M vertices in X, so that'll be XM. We could, of course, also call it XN, since M and N are equal. The other partite set we'll call Y, and it contains some vertices Y1, Y2, all the way through some mth vertex YM. Notice that both partite sets have the same number of vertices. Now we just need to prove that this graph is Hamiltonian, so we just need to show it has a Hamiltonian cycle. And it's quite easy to see that we could construct a Hamiltonian cycle by going from x1 to y1 to x2 to y2 and so on until we get to xm, then go to ym, and then return to x1, and that would be a cycle containing all vertices of the graph. Since it's a complete bipartite graph, there is an edge joining every pair of vertices that are in different partite sets. So we know this is a Hamiltonian cycle, so the graph is Hamiltonian. Let's just go ahead and write that cycle a little more formally. So we'll call this cycle C. It starts in the partite set X, at vertex x1, and then it goes to y1, and then to x2, and then to y2, and so on, all the way up to the last vertex of the partite set x, then to the last vertex of the partite set y, and then returning to x1 where it started, completing the Hamiltonian cycle. So since this is a Hamiltonian cycle in our complete bipartite graph, we know it is Hamiltonian. The importance of M and N being greater than or equal to 2 is that it guarantees that this last vertex of Y, YM, is not actually Y1. Because if it was, the cycle we'd be looking at wouldn't actually be a cycle. It would be X1, Y1, X1. So we'd be traversing the same edge twice. That's not allowed in a cycle. So that's the importance of the greater than or equal to two condition for this direction of the proof. Now for the other direction, we need to assume we have a Hamiltonian complete bipartite graph. And knowing this, we need to prove that m is equal to n and they are both greater than or equal to two. Since KMN is Hamiltonian, it must have a Hamiltonian cycle by definition. Since it has a cycle, it has to have at least three vertices. Since we know it has at least three vertices, we know that at least one of M or N has to be greater than or equal to two. Then if we can prove that M is equal to N, that will of course imply that they are both greater than or equal to two. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's just begin by naming our partite sets. Since we know this is a complete bipartite graph, let's call its partite sets X and Y. 
Now, the only other thing we know about the graph is that it's Hamiltonian, so we might as well go ahead and write out a Hamiltonian cycle of the graph. Let's just call the Hamiltonian cycle C, and it starts at some vertex V1, then goes to some vertex V2, and so on, all the way up to how many vertices are there in the graph. Well, there are M plus N vertices in the graph, so the last unique or last distinct vertex of the cycle is Vm plus n, and then it needs to return to V1 to complete the cycle. So this is a Hamiltonian cycle in our graph. We know it exists because the graph is Hamiltonian. Now the argument we're going to make is actually a bit simpler with a Hamiltonian path. Since we've got a Hamiltonian cycle, we can just get rid of this last vertex, and what we're left with is a Hamiltonian path, which we will call P. So this is a path that visits every vertex of the graph. And since it's a path, all of its vertices are distinct. So again, all we did there was get rid of that last part of the cycle where we return to the first vertex. We don't need that, so we get rid of it and just consider the Hamiltonian path that's left behind. Now, without loss of generality, let's say the first vertex is in the partite set X. Then, of course, it must be that the next vertex, V2, is an element of the partite set Y, because every edge in a bipartite graph joins vertices from different partite sets. So it must be that every vertex of the partite set X that lies on the path P is followed by a vertex in the partite set Y. So I'll say that one more time. Every vertex of the partite set X that lies on our path must be followed by a vertex of Y, since this is a bipartite graph. You might think, well, maybe that's not true. Maybe this last vertex is a vertex of X, which would mean that not every vertex of X is followed by a vertex of Y, since this vertex isn't followed by anything. But in fact, we know this last vertex has to be in Y, because remember, originally, we had a cycle where this vertex was followed by a vertex in X. Hence, Vm plus n must be in Y. So every single vertex of X that lies on this path is followed by a vertex of Y. Now that means that our path P must have the same number of vertices from X as it does from Y. But since it has all vertices of X and all vertices of Y, that must mean that X and Y have the same cardinality. And therefore, M and N, which are the number of vertices in the partite sets, the cardinalities of the partite sets, that means that M is equal to N. And since at least one of them has to be greater than or equal to 2, it must be the case that they are both greater than or equal to 2 since they are equal. And that completes the proof. If I were trying to be super formal and rigorous about it, I might define a bijection from the partite set X to the partite set Y. But if that's what you want to do, it's pretty easy to do so using this argument to figure out what the bijection would have to be. In any event, I hope this video helped you understand this wonderful theorem that the complete bipartite graph KMN is Hamiltonian if and only if both of its partite sets have the same number of vertices, at least two in each. Monal, who wanted to see this video, also said that he thought my voice would fit songs by Owl City pretty well. So I'll leave you with a little bit of me playing the song Fireflies by Owl City. I was never a huge fan of this song back when it came out uh, many years ago, but all the girls I had crushes on in middle school were. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. You would not believe your eyes If ten million fireflies Lit up the world as I fell asleep Cause they'd fill the open air Leave teardrops everywhere You'd think me rude But I would just stand and stare I'd like to make myself believe the planet Earth turns slowly It's hard to say that I'd rather stay awake when I'm asleep